morning, good morning, good morning. I want to welcome those who are here today. And I want to welcome those who are on their way in from small group uh, or the coffee shop. And those who are headed this way uh, on the road there. Welcome Facebook Live as well. I'm so glad to have you here this morning. Of course, this is fall break, so we have folks scattered absolutely everywhere. And we are praying that they have a fantastic time no matter where uh, they are. Yesterday was great. We had a baptism up at Possum Creek. We baptized two, uh, Dr. Prater and Adam. It was really, really great. It was really, really cold. It was very, very cold. And, uh, but it was fantastic. Um, I just want to mention that um, we need to be praying uh, for the pastor and his family of Two Rivers there in Ottawa. Uh, they lost their 15-year-old son in a tragic accident um, at the haunted hilltop on 58 Highway. And uh, this happened uh, yesterday, the day before. It was so tragic. And so just be praying for that precious family. Uh, Lindsay, you pronounce their last name Jensen? Jensen. Jensen. All right. And so let's remember uh, this family uh, in prayer. I want to remind you that Wednesday night uh, we're eating once again. It is our potluck uh, here, uh, dinner, and, and so don't forget about that. We will have a fantastic time. Saturday uh, is our fall festival. It begins at 4.30, uh, and so we will have a great time here. Uh, we'll have all kinds of kids coming in and out, so uh, be here Saturday at 4.30, and then next Sunday begins our fall revival with Dr. Morris Anderson. I've had him several times through the years. You will love uh, Morris. Uh, he's been here before, but it's been many, many years ago. And then on October the 26th, it's a Saturday, if you are interested in going on our mission trip to Alaska, uh, Anchorage, Alaska, next summer, uh, if you would please be here for that information meeting, it is on the 26th at 10 o'clock, and we'll give you all kinds of details for that meeting. It's so good to see you here. If you would, would you leap to your feet? I'm going to pray, and we're going to worship King Jesus today. Let's pray together. Father, dear God, we thank you so much that we can be right here, right now. We thank you for your love. Father, we thank you for those that were baptized yesterday. We thank you for the one that will be baptized today. Father, we thank you for your love. God, I pray that you'd be with Miss Darlene up here on the stage. Help her to, God, continue to feel better. I thank you that she is back with us today. I pray that you'd just be with her help her. Father, I pray for others that are here this morning that stand in need of prayer. And we just want to say that we love you. We praise you. Uh, Father, I pray today that we might feel your manifest presence in this place. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Alright, so this coming Saturday is our fall festival. And we still need a couple of people for trunk or treat. And, like, you don't even have to stand by your phone. If you just want to stick a bowl in your trunk of candy and then go enjoy the fall festival, like, that's okay. But there's a sign-up sheet in the fellowship hall for that, if you guys could get on that. We also need more pumpkins for our pumpkin patch. So bring those in, drop them off at the pavilion, and um, we would be so appreciative. Um, so I'm extra excited this morning because this past week I had lost my voice. And I never dreamed, it, Tony and Andrew said it was an answered prayer to them. Um, but it's back. And so I, I, never, I never realized how awful it was not to be able to sing and praise the Lord. And praise team can evidence this. Like in praise team practice, I had Abby translate for me. And I was like, and it was terrible. So... I chose made to worship this morning because we are made to worship. And even though my voice sounds terrible this morning, I'm going to lift it up to Jesus. And I want you guys to do the same thing. So let's praise him this morning. Made to worship.
as some of you may know, today is actually Pastor Appreciation Day. Tony didn't even know, and I had to remind him. But because of so many people being out on fall break, we have chosen as a praise team to celebrate it um, next Sunday as we start our revival. But as we greet, tell Tony how much you appreciate him. Um, we truly love him. He is not a pastor who delegates to his congregation to do things for him. He still makes personal, thank you. He still makes, <laughs> he still makes personal hospital visits. There's not been a child that Andrew and I've had that he has not been there. Um, He's still so personable. He prays for you from the bottom of his heart. And everybody give him a big hand this morning because he is an amazing All right, let's greet each other this morning and give Tony big hugs.
right, you may be seated if you are not already. We're introducing a new song to, um, to the congregation this morning called First Things First. And it goes along perfectly with the sermon that you're about to hear. But it's about, do we give him um, the things of this world? Are we more obsessed with the things of this world than the things that are of God? And um, the video, if you've never seen it on YouTube, is uh, focused on parents who are more focused on their computers or their phones or their jobs than their kids. And you know, our kids are our greatest work. Um, they're the future. And it's our job to give them the foundation that is firm in Christ. So um, sing along if you know it's first things first. continue to worship. If you want to use your hymnal for this song, it's called In the Garden. It's hymn number 476. I'm going on memory by that, so I hope that's right. 
Um, but it was neat because as we chose this hymn this week, I had asked the praise team like what this hymn meant to them personally. And everybody had a different answer. So as we sing this, I challenge you to think about the words and what this means to you in your relationship with Christ. <laughs> holiness and this is a prayer basically to God to make us more like him so say this prayer as we sing this this morning
Holiness, holiness is what I long for. Holiness is what I need. Holiness, holiness is what you want from me. Faithfulness, church, sing it out this morning. Faithfulness, faithfulness is what I long for. Faithfulness is what I need. this morning and I know it's easy to ask God for all the things that we need but have you ever just said a prayer to him that is just in complete praise and thankfulness and giving him all your gratitude
God's amen. amen amen thank you so much praise team if you would this morning as our kids go back to kids on the rock take your bible and turn to luke chapter 5 luke chapter 5 uh, as you know we are in a six-week series on spiritual disciplines 
Uh, we have entitled this entire series Back to the Basics. Back to the Basics now and forever. Uh, we are looking, listen very carefully this morning, we are looking at these activities, these behaviors, these habits that we practice on a daily basis that lead us to spiritual maturity. I've said over and over that uh, you will never drift toward spiritual maturity. I'm telling you, you will never drift toward that. You have to be intentional. Uh, it'll be on the screen, but Vance Havner often said this. He said the alternative to discipline is disaster. The alternative to discipline is disaster. And we see that uh, in all aspects of our lives, and especially our spiritual life. We have been looking at one passage, sort of as the theme uh, for this entire series. It was birthed out of this passage, and again it will be on the screen, 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 7 and 8. Verse 7 says this, notice, but reject profane and old wives' fables, and look at this, exercise yourself toward godliness. In other words, discipline yourself, train yourself toward godliness. That's, that's why we're talking about spiritual disciplines. We have to exercise ourselves, train ourselves. One writer put it like this, that is a sweaty word. That's something that we do. It's something that we get involved in. And then verse 8 says this, it says, for bodily exercise profits a little, but godliness is profitable for all things, having promise of the life that is now and that which is to come. And so back to the basics, now and forever. Now and forever. We have looked at the spiritual discipline of prayer. And we saw in Mark 1.35 where Jesus rose up a great while before day and He spent time with the Lord. And one of the things that we said about that is this. Uh, we said that if you go a day or if you go a season without prayer, what you are really saying is, God, that's alright, I've got this. I don't need you. We would never say that out loud, but that's really what it means. And then we looked at the spiritual discipline of service where John T. unpacked the passage in Timothy, looking at the qualifications of a deacon, and we talked about serving the Lord, and we had that incredible deacon ordination that was absolutely amazing. And then we looked at the spiritual discipline of worship, uh, where we dropped in on a conversation that Jesus had with the woman at the well in John chapter 4. And when he looked at her and he said these words, he said, listen, the most acceptable or the only acceptable worship is that we worship him in spirit and in truth. In spirit and in truth. And then we looked last week at our devos. We looked last week at our devotional life. And we looked at one verse of Scripture, Psalm 119, verse 105, where the Bible says, the psalmist said this, that your word what is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. And we talked about how important it is to daily get into the Word of God. And now this morning, we're going to look at stewardship. We're going to look at stewardship. We're going to look at how you manage your spiritual life and all the aspects of that. It's an amazing thing that we need to be all in. Too often we see people who really have one foot in and one foot out. They're not sold out. Uh, so often we have people who really think of Christianity as sort of part-time. But what we're going to find today is that we need to be all in for King Jesus. All in. That is a spiritual 
discipline. And so take your Bible, Luke chapter 5, and allow your eyes to fall on verse 27. Luke 5, notice if you will, verse 27, and I only have two verses this morning as our text. Luke 5 and verse 27. After these things, he, that's Jesus, he went out and he saw a tax collector named Levi. He was sitting at the tax office and he said to him, follow me. Now notice the response. So he, Levi, you might know him as Matthew, he, what did he do? He left all, he rose up and followed him. He left all, he rose up, And followed him. Let's pray together. Our Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we bow before you. Father, we thank you for your word. It is, as we often say, alive and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Father, I pray today that you would help us to see truth. Once you see truth, it is so hard to unsee truth, God. And so I pray that the words of this text will come alive this morning while we're in this place. And when we walk out of this place, that our hearts will be challenged to walk out and to live out and to flesh out these spiritual disciplines daily, oh God. Help us to know that we'll never drift to spiritual maturity, that that we have to be intentional. and, And God, we're looking at how to do that, so help us to do it. Father, I pray that right now that you would give me clarity of thought of the things that I've studied, those things this week that I've bathed in prayer. And Lord, I pray from the bottom of my heart this morning, I pray that you would draw a circle around this preacher and let the fire of heaven fall. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Do something a little different. I'm not going to give you the points until just in a little bit. Because I want to look at this passage. And so if we can look at Luke 5 and again verse 27. uh, Notice what it says. After these things he, notice Jesus, he went out and what did he do church? He saw this tax collector. That word saw is an, an incredible word in the Greek language. That word saw means, listen, that he beheld. Now I want, you to, I want you to grab a hold of this because it's so powerful. Jesus, looking at this tax collector, he beheld him. He gazed intently at him. He observed him. That is where we get our word for theater. I don't know if you've been to the movies lately, but if three of you go, I can tell you by experience, if you get popcorn and Coke and you watch a movie, it's almost $100. It's almost $100. And so if you're going to drop a C note, if you're going to drop a $100 bill, you're, go- you're going you're to watch that movie. Jesus, that word is, He was paying attention to this tax collector. Now why is that so important? Because in that day, I'm telling you, a tax collector, they were avoided. They were despised. They were hated. A tax collector in that day, they were shunned. And they were ostracized. Why? Because they were looked on as a traitor. They were a turncoat. They were, listen, a vassal of Rome. What they did is they would bid for for an area and they would outbid others. And they would take up taxes for Rome. And they would have a set amount. And anything that they got above that, they would stick in their own pocket. They would pad their own pocket so people could not stand them. So this passage is amazing. Because what it says is, after these things, He, Jesus, He went out and He he gave eye contact. To this tax collector. This despised man. He gave 
eye contact. And I just like to sort of think about it, church, like this. It's probably close to the end of the day. And probably, Levi, what he's doing is he's sort of looking through the receipts of the day. He's probably counting the money and he is closing up shop. But while he is doing that, there are people that are walking by and under their breath they're saying this, You big crook. You thief. Under their breath they're saying, You good for nothing. And he's hearing all of that. Can you imagine just listening to that? He is hearing all of that. And he's listening to all of that. And then he looks up and he sees the gaze of Christ Jesus. Woo! He sees the gaze of Jesus. And those eyes are piercing. And they're looking at this tax collector. And they see nothing. He sees nothing but love and concern. It's life changing. And what happens is the Bible says Jesus, he saw this tax collector. This man's name was Levi. He was sitting at the tax office or the tax booth. And he said to him two words. Listen, church, don't miss this. Follow me. Fo hey, hey, come here. Follow me. You know what that means? It means to accompany me. Those two words, it means join me. Come over on my side, on my team. And it gets even deeper than that. It means this, with no conflicting loyalties, come over to me. And in verse 28, I want you to see the response. This, this response has blown me away for 40 years. Look at what Levi did. And so he left all and he rose up. And what did he do? He followed him. He left everything. What did he leave? He left his possessions. He left his position. Think about that for just a moment. If this Jesus thing didn't work out, the other disciples, they could go back to fishing. But it would be almost impossible, if not impossible, to go back to collecting taxes. So he leaves his position, his prestige, his power, his plans. He leaves all of that and he follows Jesus. And so this morning, I want to talk about just for a moment or two that we need to be all in. This part-time Christianity, it's a sorry hobby. I'm going to tell you that. It is a sorry hobby. Some of you have tried it before. Some of you have tried it before. And if you're going part-time with Jesus or you're trying to go part-time with Jesus, I promise you, you are going to be miserable. Miserable. I promise you that. And so there are three things that I want us to be all in this morning. Three things. We'll do it very quickly. First of all, it'll be on the screen, with our time. With our time. Let me tell you something. Every one of us have the same amount of time in every day. Amen. Every week and every month. It's truly what you do with it. It's what you do with it. My dad, and I've told you this before, but when I was a little kid, my dad often looked at me and he would say this, Tony, one of these days, you're going to turn around and you're going to be 40. <laughs> Guess what? He was right. I turned around, and several years ago, I was 40. He was dead on. I'm telling you, time flies like this right here. I'm not telling you anything that you don't know. Time, hey, listen, time flies. It absolutely flies. If you have young children, enjoy every moment with those young children. My oldest is 37 and my youngest is 30. Listen, enjoy every moment. But then, after that, God gives you grandchildren sometimes. Amen? Amen. Woo! That's awesome. But time. Time's a funny thing. Do you remember? How many of you remember? How many of you remember that TV used to go off at midnight? Do you? Anybody in here remember that? TV went off at midnight and there was a national anthem and the, the flag would wave. Do you remember the flag waving? And I can't tell you how many times I watched the flag wave and then all of a sudden, just static. And it did not come back on until 6 in the morning. And then all of a sudden, here it came back on. Listen, time, has, time is, 
is a cra- it's amazing. Time is amazing. The Bible talks a lot about it. It'll be on the screen. The Bible says in Psalm 39 and verse 4, look at what the Word of God says. Lord, make me to know my end and what is the measure of my days. The psalmist said that I may know how frail I am. And then in Psalm 90 and verse 12, Moses, he wrote this psalm. It was a prayer in Psalm 90 verse 12. So teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Teach us to number our days. And then the half-brother of Jesus in James 4 and verse 14, it says, Whereas you do not know what will happen tomorrow, For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then it vanishes away. That's our life. That's life. That's life. And so it's what what we do. What are you going to do in this time that you have? What are you... Hey, listen. What are you going to do for King Jesus in the time that He has given you? C.T. Studd on the screen. C.T. Studd says this. It's one of my favorite quotes. Only one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. Can you say amen? Amen. Only what's done for Christ will last. And So time's a funny thing. I remember when I was in youth ministry in my early 20s. um, I was at Chamberlain Memorial at this particular time. Chamberlain Memorial Baptist Church. It is now our access campus. But I was there as a youth minister, and back then I was ignorance on fire. That's all I was. I was just ignorance on fire. I really was. And I, I, I'm ashamed to tell you this, but this actually happened. There was one day that I had lunch planned with three different people at the same time. I had scheduled it, totally forgotten about it. I probably didn't even remember anybody was going to show up. And all of a sudden, I'm sitting in my office, and three different men walk in to have lunch with me at the same time. I was like, "Uh (laughs) uh-oh. And so I do not remember what happened that day. I don't know if I went out with one, three, or none. I don't remember what happened. What I do remember is this, and I told this at her funeral. Ruth Ann White was the secretary back then, the administrative assistant. When I got back from lunch... I sat down, and she had been somewhere, and she brought me a calendar, (laughs) and she laid it on my desk, and she smiled at me. She didn't say a word, and she just walked off. She didn't have to say a word. She did not have to say a word. I was uh, 22 years old. Do you know what? I, I have lived by a calendar ever since then. I've realized how important time is, how important people are. And, and, and when, I think of, when I think of Levi, when I think of Matthew, when I think of the fact that Jesus said, follow me, listen, he walked away from everything and, and he invested his time into the kingdom. And so simply, I want to look at you and I want to beg you, listen, the time that you have, you need to give it to King Jesus. Love your family. Spend time with your family. Spend, spend time with what God's called you to do. But, but you need to invest it in the kingdom. There's a second thing, and it's this. Your talent. Your talent. Some of you can sing. Some of you can't. <laughs> if you can sing, you ought to sing. Some of you teach and some of you preach. Some of you are retired. Um, Whatever you do, if it's retail, listen, whatever it is, however God has gifted you, you need to take that gifting and use it for the Lord. Don't ever go to an office or a cubicle and sit down and just compartmentalize that time and just say, this is work time and I'll get to Jesus' time later. It's all together. We are to... Whatever God has blessed you with, however God has gifted you, you need to give it to the Lord. And and you need to do it, listen church, from the bottom of your heart. 
From the bottom of your heart, you need to give it to the Lord. I love, it'll be on the screen, I love this passage. Romans 12 and verse 11. Look at what it says. Not lagging in diligence, fervent in spirit. What? Serving the Lord. Let me paraphrase that. Don't mess around. You need to be fervent in spirit. Serving the Lord. The Bible says in Ephesians 2 and verse 10, for we are His workmanship. You know that word means masterpiece. I want you to look at your neighbor. Look at your neighbor and smile real big and say, you're a masterpiece. Look at him and say, you're a masterpiece. All right, come back, come back, come back. Now, listen, listen. Look at your other neighbor, your second choice. Look at your second choice and say, you're a masterpiece. Say it to them. You're a masterpiece. All right, now, look. Look at what it says here. You guys needed that this morning. Didn't you need that? Some of, we are His workmanship. We are His masterpiece created in Christ Jesus. How? We're created for good works. We're not saved by good works, but we're created for, created for good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. We, we, we are created for good works. We should never come in and just sit on a pew and do nothing. we got to get involved. There's so many, so many different ways to get involved. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 31, Therefore, whether you eat or drink, listen, or whatever you do, do it all to the glory of God. A.W. Tozer says this. Look at what it says. A.W. Tozer on the screen says, Christianity is hard when we try to serve God in man's way instead of serving God in God's way. I'm telling you, every morning, church, every morning what you ought to do is get up and when you have that Devo we talked about last week, you say, God, what do you want me to do today? How can I serve you today? How can I serve you today? John Flavel, he preached in the 1700s. He's preaching one day and a 15-year-old man by the name of Luke Short was seated there. Luke Short. And that young man heard the sermon as others heard the sermon. And there was hardly any movement at the altar. Hardly anything happened. And everyone left the church house. Eighty-five years later, when he was 100 years old. Eighty-five years later. He still was sound in body and mind. He was out plowing his field. Luke Short. He was plowing his field and he sat down and leaned his back on a hay bale. And he began to reflect on his life. He began to reflect on his life, church, and listen. He began to think about John Flavel. And he began to think about that sermon that John Flavel preached. And 85 years after he heard that sermon, the Holy Spirit of the living God convicted his heart. And he called upon the name of the Lord to be saved. Leaning on a hay bale, a hundred years old, he gave his heart to Christ. Luke Short Named ironically, he lived to be 116 years old. And for all of those years gave evidence that he got the goods. So if you're a preacher like I am, if you're a teacher, if you work at Starbucks, or if you work back here from the grounds up, wherever you work, we are to give all to the glory of God. There's a third and final thing, not just your time and not just your talent, but your treasure. 
your treasure. We, we, we are to give to God. We are to give to our God. Amen. He has given us all. One of, the, one of the most fun things I do, and I, I'm not, this is not hyperbole, and this is not preacher talk. One of the most fun things I do is either Saturday night or Sunday morning, I pull out my little box of envelopes, and I put my name on it, and I write out my check. And then on Sunday morning, I, love to, I usually put it right over there in that offering plate. I, just love, I love to give to the Lord. I love to give to the Lord. you know why? Because the Bible teaches us that it's all His anyway. The Bible says, and it'll be on the screen, it's over in the clean white pages of your Bible. Haggai 2 and verse 8, look. The silver, God said, the silver is mine and the gold is mine, says the Lord of hosts. When it's His, I don't know how many times, before I bought my Bronco, I don't know how many times that I've had automobiles that have sort of just stopped on me. And it's, it's fun to say, Lord, your car's stopped. <laughs> That's awesome. It's not mine. Lord, your car's stopped. So we got to get your car going. All right. Or your, your house has a plumbing opportunity, like it did last year. And God, it's just amazing. You see, you've heard me say this before, it's not equal giving because all of us are at different places in our lives, but it's equal sacrifice. It's not equal giving, it's equal sacrifice. We are to give to the Lord. I love this story on the screen. Mark 12, in verse 41, it says this, Now Jesus sat opposite the treasury, and He saw how the people put money into the treasury, and many who were rich put in much. Verse 42 says this. The very next verse. Then one poor widow came and threw in two mites, which make a quadrants. Verse 43. So He called His disciples to Himself and said to them, Assuredly, I say to you that this poor widow has put in more than all of those who have given to the treasury. Verse 44 says this, listen. For they all put in out of their abundance, but she out of her poverty put in all that she had her whole livelihood. That, that's the widow might, the widow's might there. I've told you before, but I, I have two of those little widow's might that I got in Israel. I love those things. They're a precious thing to my heart. That lady gave all that she had. So we ought to, just as we look at our time and, and we say, well, I need to give my time to the Lord. I don't need to waste my time. And, and, and I need to give my talent to the Lord. Whatever, However God's gifted me, I need to, I need to give it to the Lord. I, I don't need to waste my talent. We, we need to, to give our, of our treasure to the Lord. I love this passage in 2 Corinthians 9 and verse 7. Look at what it says. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a what? Cheerful, cheerful giver. God loves a cheerful giver. Now, about ten years ago, I preached on that message, the entire sermon, on that message right there, on that verse rather, right there. And I really camped out on the word cheerful, and I said this, I'll never say it again. But I said this, I'll never say it again. I said this. I said, I've never heard anybody laugh hysterically when they gave. There was a dear lady that was... A member of our church at that time. She's in heaven now. I did her funeral. and She took it upon herself the next month at offering time. She laughed hysterically. <laughs> I mean, she just giggled and laughed. She sat right back there and she just laughed and laughed and laughed. And I loved it, but everybody else was like, what in the world's going on? So don't do that, okay? Don't do it in your heart, all right? Be a cheerful giver in your heart. 
But you, you need to be a cheerful. We ought to be a cheerful giver. We ought to be a. You say, Brother T, is it, is it the tithe? That's a, a tithe is a great place to start. It's a great place to start. When I was in uh, Jamaica for many years, spent about 25 years, once a year, over on the island, and Font Hill Baptist Church, they, they took up offering in a very unique way. Now, we're also going to not do that here. Um, but they would, it was during greeting time, and their music was rocking the building and they would dance and twirl and twirl and dance all the way down to the offering plates. And they would drop it in and then they would dance. And you say, Brother T, give us an example. No, I'm not going to, okay? I'm not going to. But they would dance and twirl all the way back to their seat as they were hugging each other and hugging each other. They, they were so joyful in their giving. It is so important, church. That we be sold out for the Lord. The most miserable person in all the church. And some of us have been there. And you may be there right now. The most miserable person is that backslidden individual. That used to be on fire for King Jesus. But the, now they're, they're walking at a guilty distance. Oh, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't be part-time. Give your all. Jonathan, go back to Luke 5. It's at the very beginning. Verse 27 and 28. Luke 5. And notice what it says. Verse 27 and 28. Luke 5. It says, all these things, he, Jesus, he went out and he saw, he gazed upon. He observed this tax collector that everyone else hated, but he cared about. He had compassion on. And he looked and this guy was at the office, the tax office, and he said, listen, would you just follow me in verse 28? Changed my life many years ago, so Levi, Matthew, he left all, he rose up, and he followed him. He followed him. By the way, if you've got a New Testament, that first gospel was written by this guy. And he quoted, if I'm not mistaken, this is by memory, but if he quoted, he quoted the Old Testament more than any other gospel writer. He knew the book. He knew the book. So when he followed, he followed. I want to challenge you. I want to challenge you today. I want to challenge you from the bottom of my heart. I want to challenge you. Don't be part-time. These spiritual disciplines get a hold of God in prayer. Get a hold of God and serve Him. Get a hold of God in worship. Get a hold of God. Listen, in, in reading the Word and get a hold of God in managing your life in time, talent, and treasure. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. In just a moment, we're going to have a, a song and we're going to sing. This is our invitation song. Some of you are here. And just like Luke Short, you have never called upon the name of the Lord to be saved. <coughs> I can't promise you 116 years, but I can promise you your life will change forever. So some of you are here today. You need to walk down this aisle. You need to take me by the hand and just say, Brother T, I need Jesus. I need Jesus. Some of you are here and you're saved and you know it. But you need to be immersed just like Marvin today and Chris and Adam yesterday in the lake. You need to be immersed by baptism in the waters of baptism. I encourage you to come and just say, next time you baptize, would you baptize me? There are others here. Listen, there are others here. And this altar is open. These steps are our altars here at White Oak. And maybe you just want to come and God has hit you right between the running lights and you want to come and say, God, you know what? I, Father, I, I am. I'm I'm walking at a guilty distance. I'm not as on fire today as I used to be. And, and there's some things that I need to shore up in my life. I want to encourage you to come. Just spend some time with the King. 
some of you today, you've been visiting. And maybe today you need to come and say, you know what, I want to join that church. I want to join that fellowship. We would love to have you. This is your song. This is your uh, decision time. You ought to come. Very quietly, very reverently, would you stand all over this auditorium? Just stand and I'm going to pray right after I pray. Right after I pray, I invite you to come. Father, God, I pray that you would help us to seek you. Help us to draw near to you because when we do, you draw near to us. Father, I pray that as we search our heart today, if there's one here, God, that is uncomfortable because they know they need to give their hearts to you, I pray that today that they will do that, Lord. Be with that one or two that need to follow you in believer's baptism. Be with those that need to use this altar, God. Be with those that should join this fellowship. We give these next few moments to you. They're yours. First in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Jennifer's going to lead us. And as we sing, would you come? I will bless the Lord forever. And Sing it out, church. Trust in man all times. He has delivered me from all sin. And he has set my feet upon a Say of the Lord, you are my shield, Amen. my strength, my portion, deliverer, my shelter, strong tower, my very present help in time of just for a moment, be seated just for a moment. I'm going to go up and get ready for baptism. I think you guys are going to have some baptism preparation song. All right, he made y'all sit, so I'm going to let you stay seated because I think that's what you want. But let's continue to sing this out to the Lord. We'll start right here. You have made me glad and I'll say of the Lord you are my shield, my strength, my portion, deliverer, my shelter, strong tower, my very present help. You are my shield, my 
forth whether to sing gratitude or in the garden again and everybody seemed like they were worshiping so well to gratitude that it ended too soon so we're going to sing gratitude again yeah. <laughs> worship the way you want to worship don't be worried about people around you if you want to hold up your hands hold up your hands um, don't laugh hysterically like Tony <laughs> said the lady did but <laughs> worship the way you want to worship Thank God for it. I just want to say that the water today is much 
warmer than the water yesterday. Uh, so, but, uh, but God is good. God is good. Marvin, upon your profession of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, and just a couple of days ago, in obedience to our Lord's command, I baptize you, my new brother, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. God's people said, Amen. 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 Would you stand with me? And I'm going to ask uh, David Hudson if he'd come to the stage and take a mic. He's going to close us in prayer. We welcome David and Ginger back from Ireland. And uh, he's going to close us in prayer. Don't forget, Wednesday night is our potluck dinner. And so we're going to have a great time. And then Saturday is our fall festival. It begins at 430. And so uh, remember that. And then a revival next Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for the opportunity to gather in your house and to watch this new brother in Christ, God, be baptized as he's accepted you, and now he's got a whole new future. And uh, we just praise you for that. God, we thank you for the series, the sermons that we have to remind us, God, that we need to get back to the basics in our relationship. We need to spend more time with you. We need to spend um, more of our treasures that you have blessed us with, God. And um, I just ask that you convict our hearts this week to spend time in the Word, that you bring us along um, in a relationship with you and draw us closer to you. We thank you for this church. We thank you for what you're doing in our church. And um, we just give you the praise. But that you be with us as we go throughout this day and this week. And we'll bring us back next Sunday, God, to gather with your brothers and sisters in Christ. In Jesus' name, amen.